This is a description of our first post-pandemic trip. Uh, this time we're going back to New Mexico and Colorado, but we're going to be seeing some sites that we didn't see previously. Um, I'm calling this the ruins trip because we visited uh, several places that had some really unique ruins. So on day one, what we did was take a flight from Bradley International Airport in Hartford to Minneapolis, changed planes, and then down to Albuquerque. And once in Albuquerque, we rented a car, a Ford Edge SUV, because we knew we were going to need uh, a fairly rugged car for this trip. And we immediately drove from the Sunport, which is the airport down in Albuquerque, upward to the place where we stayed our first evening uh, at the Santa Ana Pueblo, and that's the Hyatt Regency Tamaya Resort, a place that we stayed on a previous trip. It's really a great place. When you drive in, um, once you reach this alcove of sorts where you can check in, a uh, great statue out front, and the views are just incredible, as you can see. We um, uh, had dinner that night, not very much because uh, we had some food on the plane, but um, that was what the Santa Ana Cafe looked like. And uh, we had our requisite margaritas and uh, tortilla soup. My wife also had some polenta with that. And that was all great. And then afterwards, I took a walk all around the property. Um, it's very well landscaped with rocks, different rock formations, as you can see. I took a hike down this trail, the Cottonwoods and Bosque Trail. Uh, I found this sign rather interesting, <laughs> um, that there were going to be coyotes, uh, possibly coyotes, rattlesnakes, and wildcats. Um, so of all of, the, of, the, of these three uh, creatures, the, the one that I don't have to worry about back home in Connecticut are rattlesnakes. Uh, we do have coyotes and wildcats, however. Uh, on this particular excursion, I didn't see any of these things, but we will be looking at a coyote later on. Okay, so I was walking down this trail. It was a very pleasant walk. And uh, I shot this uh, video just from our hotel room. It shows one of the areas where you can walk and this magnificent mountain that literally lights up at sunset on a sunny day. And I've actually shown this on a previous video for another trip that we made to this area several years ago. And here we are getting closer to the sun setting and you can see it's getting uh, darker outside, but also the sun is shining right on these various spots in this mountain range and uh, making it very colorful. Okay, the next day we woke up and we had a buffet breakfast in the Santa Ana Cafe and then proceeded to our first major attraction. Again, going from the Hyatt Regency up to Cuba uh, and then Nagasi and then finally down this treacherous road to Chaco Cultural National Historical Park also known as Chaco Canyon. And it's a fairly large area. This road here is 21 miles long from the interstate that we were on. Actually, well, it was a state road, uh, 550, not an, in, not an uh, interstate road. But 21 miles, there, the very first portion is paved, but then it's not paved. And there are portions that are quite treacherous because they had been washed out from recent rains. And in fact, they had closed this road um, for weeks before we got there, and it was reopened just a couple days before we got there, but it was still very tricky to drive. It's a good thing that we had that SUV. So we made our way down to our first stop at the visitor center. Now, I'll leave this up. I'm not gonna go through this because I don't know a lot about this history. And uh, if you want to read it, you can take the time. You can use the pause switch on your um, uh, scrubber for this video. And uh, these numbers mean I'm going to change the slide. So if you're going to pause this to read it, do it now. Okay, so here's a clip of a portion of the unpaved road that we were on heading into Chaco Canyon. And this part was relatively okay. Uh, wasn't too bad. Uh, wasn't a very rough road. There weren't um, 
any obstacles to worry about. It was just uh, certainly, we knew we were on an unpaved road, put it that way. But it was rel relatively smooth at this point. By the way, dead ahead, you can see that area right there is uh, where we're heading, Chaco Canyon. Along that road, we actually saw this coyote right up there. There he is, looking at us, trying to f photograph him. So did pretty good. Here's a blow up of, uh, of that coyote. Now this portion of the road further along uh, it was not in very good condition. You can see I'm driving more over toward the left side of the road than the right to avoid some of those rough spots. Uh, this was starting to get trickier and trickier and got really bad further along, so bad that we didn't uh, bother trying to film it. But we eventually reached uh, the entrance area. There is this uh, big sign that people notoriously get their photos taken at, and here we are standing by that. We met another couple. Uh, over there, we took their photo, they took our photo, and we all proceeded to Chaco Canyon. That's what I pointed out earlier. So this is right at the visitor center. And here we are at the visitor center. And then we, it's just a matter of driving along this road and stopping wherever you want to stop to see various sites. The canyon itself is down here. This is all, it's deep in here. You can't drive up to it. Uh, but that is why it's called Chaco Canyon. That's basically a canyon. And our first stop was, uh, and I'm, uh, I, I'm sorry if I mispronounce any of these names, Hungo Pavi uh, or whatever. Um, so we walked along this path to see some of these runes. Off in the distance, you can see there are various sets of runes, some there, some there. And uh, just some photos that I took along the way here is a uh, walk through. This is probably about a minute long. As I'm walking along this path toward these various runes, which are straight ahead of me. And uh, the fact that uh, they're in such good shape to this day is amazing. You might not think they're in good shape, but I mean, you can see how they were constructed, which was um, really remarkable when you think about how old these various things are. Again, I'm probably not doing a great job of narrating this because I don't know a lot about the history of this area. But you get the general idea. And you can see the weather was gorgeous, by the way. We had no weather issues at all during this trip. And when you look at these walls, uh, just uh, from this view, you can see how they were constructed very meticulously, layer by layer by layer. And that's a good shot that shows, again, all the various layers of rock that these people had to haul in and then use to build these huge structures there was uh, also, these are wood beams. These are original wood beams um, to help keep the structure sound as they built up and up and upward. There's a window of sorts, an opening. And um, there again is that, uh, that same mesa that we've been seeing over by the visitor center, this time from a different angle. Now we're gonna walk along this path because it shows really nicely the different layers over on the left of this structure and you can see how high up it is. And it's just incredible thinking about how people managed to construct these things so long ago. I'm opening up uh, a folder right now that's reminding me that this is um, these structures are 1,100 to 1,200 years old, which is um, pretty old. There's a wood beam. There's a good example of a wood beam support coming through the wall, lending support to that wall. And again, this is great. You can just see how they've layered all of these different huge rocks to create this structure and all of the other structures that compose these ruins. Okay, so we, um, we headed back to the car and then stopped off at our next stop, 
Chetroketal, as best as I can pronounce it. And there are some, some runes right in there as part of this site. And so we walked along and got closer to those. Okay, and again, you can see the construction, how well everything was constructed, openings in the walls supported by wood so things would not cave in. I'm looking down at a pit that was dug out. Be sure to use your pause button I'm going through these fairly quickly, try to keep this at a reasonable length. This is one of the many, 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 many kivas that we saw at these various sites. And if you want to look up kiva, K-I-V-A, on the internet, you can learn more about what these were, why they were built, what they were used for. I also talked about kivas um, on a previous video. And there's another one and a whole bunch. <laughs> there's one there, there's one there, there's one there, there's one there, there's one over here. Um, I think there's another one back there. Again, kivas everywhere. This one has a unique shape to it. Uh, it's not perfectly round. There's this other area right over here. And again, we're still at that same site. This, uh, this is good because it really shows how well constructed these were with these wood beams that kept the structure from caving in because these are openings that people walked through. You had to stoop way, way down to go through them and we did that. Um, this is, um, I guess, the best of all of the ruins sites, I think most people would agree that Pueblo Benito is what everybody absolutely must see when they go to Chaco Canyon. So this was really our ultimate uh, destination. We didn't spend a whole lot of time at those other two sites, but uh, we wanted to spend more time at Pueblo Benito. So here we are walking up to it. You know, from this angle, it doesn't look like there's a whole lot there. But as you'll, you'll see, there really is a lot tucked into that space. I was pretty impressed because it just didn't look like there was going to be a lot there as I was walking up to it. But then once you get inside or you look at it from above, I'll show you a photo of that, you can uh, get a better sense of um, the extensiveness of the ruins at Pueblo Benito. There was a cave in at one point, and these rocks are all caved in. They did some huge damage. Again, these are all rocks that came caving down the side of that mountain. But fortunately, they left. They didn't do uh, major damage. There's, I mean, they did a lot of damage where they caved in, but there's uh, still a lot that's still standing. You can see here. Here are some of those rocks that fell but uh, it left a, a good chunk of Pueblo Benito untouched. Again, some of those caved in rocks. Uh, they were huge, it's pretty impressive. And I just wanted to show what the general area looked like with this video. Fortunately, there weren't uh, a lot of people there when we were there, that was good. Some touring groups, but not, not huge. So again, you can see the caved rocks in the rocks in the foreground and the existing structures that still remain behind them. Caved rocks. And uh, again, kivas everywhere. Kiva, 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 kiva. Ki I, I'm going to stop counting at this point. Nice example of architecture with this wall in terms of how it was constructed. 
Now, you, you were able to hike up, you can see a hiker up there, to the top of this if you wanted to get an aerial view um, for time's sake and also uh, to save our strength a little bit. <laughs> we decided not to do this hike because it was pretty steep. Uh, but I did find this photo that somebody else shot. Um, so that's the view that we would have gotten had we uh, gone up to the top of that ridge. Uh, but it gives you a good idea of the layout and the number of kivas everywhere at Pueblo Benito. Love this shot of this rock. Again, it shows the incredible construction. Kivas. Uh, there's another view for a different angle of those rocks that caved in. Looking down into a kiva. Uh, this shows a, a whole series of these uh, openings, uh, doorways as such, um, from one portion of a room to another portion. So you could walk through these things. You have to duck way down or else you're going to hit your head right on these, these beams that are still there. There's my wife ducking down to get through this opening. Again, there were windows. Again, a whole series of walkthroughs. More upper windows. And there's another person that had just walked through this, taking a photo of uh, something up above. I think uh, some of these windows uh, again, the wood beams, you see these everywhere, poking through. We walked through there. As I walked through there, I actually pointed the camera up so that you could see the wood beam supports. So I'm looking upward in one of these doorway spaces to get this photograph. This is again another Kiva. I think this is the same one. You can see all the, uh, the windows that are in the walls of the kivas. These were built for uh, ceremonial purposes. They were also had uh, like domed roofs over them. I mean, the, the, those are long gone, but these were uh, typically covered up back in the day. So here, I think we're back on that road. That's my dog who is not on this trip. She sees something out the window right now. Okay, let's see if my dog will shut up long enough to, to do some more recording. So um, now we had to get out of that park, so we had to travel back on that same treacherous dirt road. So here we are doing that. <laughs> looks, looks easier there than it was in real life. And we made our way up to our next hotel, which was the Town Place Suites by Marriott in Farmington, New Mexico. And um, again, must have uh, dark margaritas at dinner. Um, I don't even remember what this was, but I ate it. <laughs> um, my wife ate that. Uh, I see guacamole and sour cream, so some kind of a taco bowl of some sort. And I don't even remember what those are, but I remember them being good. They look like empanadas, but I don't think they were. Um, anyway, so there, that, this, this was where we stayed that next night and then got up the next morning for our third day where we traveled from Town Place Suites uh, in New Mexico up through Cortez, Colorado to our next major site, a major, major site <laughs> where we spent actually two days, Mesa Verde, um, Mesa Verde, <laughs> there you go. Uh, we, uh, we didn't make, make it to the visitor center, but this, this place was really, really huge. So again, there's a road, Cortez is off in this direction somewhere, and then you drive maybe about, uh, I don't know, uh, 15 minutes to get to the park entrance, which is here. Park entrance station is there, and um, the visitor center is back there. So you, you enter here, um, and then you can stop at the visitor center, we did that. And then there's uh, some, you have to go through like this booth over here. Uh, they just check your credentials and stuff to make sure that you're either going to pay them or that you already have a prepaid card, which we do. 
and then again all these different places you just drive along this road this fortunately was all paved so there was no treacherous driving except for these hairpin turns some of which were uh, <laughs> a bit intimidating look at this one over here uh, to get to these various sites so there's the uh, park entrance this is as we enter the park and go to the visitor center and the visitor center is, is right over in that area on the left. Um, there's this statue of a Native American climbing up the structure. I don't know the significance of it, but it is right at the entrance of the visitor center. And there we are at the visitor center, visitor and research center. And there were various displays, historical displays. They had a lot of Native American uh, jewelry and uh, pottery and things like that on display as well. So now we're out on the road and we're going to be driving along making various stopping uh, air, stopping places. Does that make any sense? Places where we stopped, put it that way. Since I stopped teaching uh, in 2017, my verbal skills have somewhat deteriorated um, now that I'm retired. Anyway, you can see we're going higher and higher up. And just looking out at this stopover place, outlook place, a place to look out upon the landscape. So again, still great weather. Only a few clouds here and there. Really, really scenic spot. And of course, as we ascend, the vegetation gets sparser and sparser and sparser anyway uh, i'll show you something really sparse later on by the way um but uh, there there are a number of these things that i photographed i didn't get everything in the screenshots but if you want to take the time to read that you can uh, pause there's our countdown clock before i advance i'm going to advance right now um but uh this was really interesting so this is an area that uh, the, the main structure is up up here and this tree i found quite fascinating there's the 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 structure but this tree for some reason caught my attention so i kept taking photos of it from different angles actually there were a number of those trees that one the, the one that i photographed close up was right on the trail so this is looking out from that same area. Okay, so our next uh, stop along that road, Park Point. There's a, a fire lookout tower there. And again, I'll, um, I'll leave this up for you to pause or not pause, because I'm gonna switch slides now, and I'm gonna do the same with this. I'm not gonna take the time to explain any of this, because I would do a really lousy job of it. <laughs> um, so next one. These were all at that one lookout point, the park point overlook. And moving on. My dog's going to bark because the neighbor's dogs are barking. There she goes. And here's another one. So again, if you want to try to read that, go to pause. If not, just stick with me. I'll get you through this. Here's that lookout tower. There wasn't anybody inside, um, but you could walk out to this platform and again, get some great views of what's going on down below. And that's a path that we had just walked down. You really need two, two to three days if you want to see everything here. We didn't see everything. And we were there for two days. 
Second day, we had a guided tour, a private guided tour by a park ranger, which was really good. We'll get to that. That was a real exciting day, actually. But again, there's the road you can see that you just drive along, get these various views. Geologic Outlook, another stop-off point. And again, if you want to read that before I skip to the next slide, which I'm going to do right now, there's another one. Same deal. That's why I put that countdown timer there, give you guys some time if you want to freeze the, freeze the frame. But, you know, the, you go to these various lookout places and you can see quite a distance off, uh, as, as you can see in this slide, there, there's uh, mountains off in the, dis uh, the distance and some great views. And again, more of these interesting, totally bare trees. Pretty incredible. Spruce Tree House is one of the major sites there. It's not the major site, but I would, I think it might be the second or third major set, site there. We're going to be looking at the major site soon. Um, but you have to hike down to it, and it was fairly steep in places, and we needed to save our energy for um, the next site, uh, the next day, actually, uh, with the uh, park ranger, because uh, that is, as we'll see, the major site. But this one is similar to this one, uh, the, the one we're going to be looking at that we actually did hike down to the next day, which is called Cliff Palace, by the way. Uh, this is the this is the equivalent of uh, Pueblo Benito. So one way to think about it is Pueblo Benito is to Chaco Canyon as Cliff Palace is to uh, Mesa Verde. So this is this is the go to place. Um, but you have to be in good physical shape in order to do it. So on this first day, we just went to the lookout area where you can look down upon it um, and see all of these incredible structures that are so old. Again, they're there over in this area, in this canyon over here. So we're just looking down into this area. We're going to be going down there, a very treacherous walk down the next day. Not right now. We were just curious, wanted to get an overview from above of what we would actually be up against, like those tourists are in this slide, uh, the very next day. And again, there's a view of that canyon. So this is, uh, again, called Cliff Palace. There's a cool raven that was uh, vocalizing at us uh, in the area where we parked. Saw a lot of ravens out there, actually. Um, Balcony House is another major site. We did not really spend much time or any time other than a brief overview. This whole area got burned out. I don't remember anymore when. I, I knew at the time, but I forgot. But all these trees are gone. I mean, this was some major, major extensive damage. You can see, and, and you can also see where, how abrupt it ended um, because you can see the trees in the background that are untouched. But here, you look in the background there and there's just nothing but burned out trees. And this went on for miles. So hopefully there will be some reforestation going on there at some point. But again, you know, you get these wildfires going out west and that's the result of them. Uh, along the road, there was a place to stop to see, guess what, Akiba <laughs> and some other things. So. Uh, this was the Farview community. There were several things there to look at to look at if you wanted to. Farview House, Pipe, sh Pipe Shrine House. We went there with our tour guide the next day. But again, I'm going to just skip ahead. There's our countdown timer. And I'm going to do the same here. And I did, a, uh, I, I chopped things off over on the left. Didn't get them in my uh, camera, which you can see I'm holding up. You can see the shadow of it. But we'll get through this one. And then another kiva at this site. There's Pipe Shrine House over there. If you want to read about that, you can do it now by freezing the frame. <coughs> Listening to my dog. <laughs> um, again, this is the same general area. 
Coyote Village, same area. There's no way I can stop my dog from doing that, so I'm just going to let her go. <laughs> she sees things outside or hears things outside. Coyote Village, if you want to learn more about that, feel free to do so because I'm moving on. Kivas everywhere. The, this one was interesting. It had these wooden supports that were exposed. You could actually see them. Didn't see that in a lot of the other kivas. Most of them look like, look like this one. And so uh, after that, we drove out of the park, out of uh, Mesa Verde, and went back to Cortez about uh, 10, 15 miles down the road where we stayed at a Best Western Turquoise Inn and Suites place. Found a place uh, that was recommended to eat at a Mexican restaurant, which was actually quite, quite good. We really had a good meal there. Of course, the requisite margaritas and chicken tortilla soup. My wife had fish tacos. I guess those are shrimp tacos, actually. And then we woke up the next day and back to Mesa Verde. So we met our guide. We had to go down that long highway again. But again, it was all paved to get to Farview Terrace. We walked from the parking area to Farview Terrace where there's a, a restaurant and gift store and food. Okay, I think I got my, my dog calmed down. Hopefully, I mean, may not last very long. Uh, Far Farview um, restaurants. I just got a voicemail on my Apple Watch. We'll deal with that later. Farview Reservoir. Again, if you want to read more about that, feel free to do so. And there was this plaque at Farview. So now we are about to actually do the Cliff Palace tour. This is a video that was produced by um, the folks out at Mesa Verde that really just does a nice job. It's only uh, uh, several minutes long. So I'm gonna go ahead and play that. I do recommend uh, watching this. Cliff Palace is the largest cliff dwelling in North America. It has 150 rooms. It has, what well, we quote, 21 kivas, but there are also two kiva-like rooms. You can actually look at it from an overlook and see into almost every room. When we get to Cliff Palace and you're waiting for the tour, you are at the overlook for it, so people can be looking down at it before the tour even starts, which is not true at Balcony House or Long House. It looks like a whole city. It looks like a city much more than a palace. And it was a city rather than a palace. In my opinion, it's the best archeological site we have on the continent. After gathering the group at the platform, we begin down the trail. The trail was cut in the 20s and 30s and it's cut right into the sandstone. And you go down some beautiful steps and then up a 10 foot tall ladder and then you're in the site. And we gather the group in a small alcove and we sit. And for 15 minutes, we just look at the site and we marvel together and we take questions about the site. It's a great launching point to not only talk about what Cliff Palace was like 800 years ago, but the whole Four Corners region. It's a good launching point to talk about what the entire continent looked like 800 years ago. And from that point, we then walk with visitors directly underneath the architecture. When I first started giving tours of the site, I didn't really fully appreciate that middle stop because you're standing directly under the architecture. So really all you're seeing are these giant walls. But now I realize that is probably one of the most impressive parts of the whole site. Because when you're standing across Canyon looking at Cliff Palace or even from the overlook looking down, you don't quite understand how large the walls are. But when you're underneath, those walls are so large, you can't even see the entire site and you get to look at each individually crafted block of sandstone that was crafted 800 years ago and realize how much time and energy the Pueblo Society invested in these sites. They built these sites so grand that they were drawing people in from all over 800 years ago, and those walls are still drawing people in from even further places 800 years later. From there, we continue on up the steps, and we actually enter the site at that point. We actually get to walk up and around several kivas and look into a room with original plasters. The kiva structure, a lot of people are kind of mystified by it when they come into the park. 
because to a lot of people, if you, if you don't know what it is, it just looks like a big open recess, basically a very circular underground room. But it was actually really advanced architecture. There used to be a roof that you could completely walk over. I was explaining to people that, you know, this is church, and when you were a Pueblo person moving into your village, you're gonna build your kiva first, and you're gonna make sure your family's comfortable in there. That's kind of the most important spot, is just your religious area. From that location, standing around the kivas, you can look back on the site that you just walked through and you really get a sense of how grand it is and how beautiful it is. And the fact that it has 21 kivas, it really means it's something special. It's a place where people were gathering, not just living, but gathering as a whole community. I really believe it must have been central to life on the Mesa Verde. Not only is the site really grand, but again, the way you exit is the original entrance and exit. When you climb the ladders and you look just to your side, you can see the original hand and toe holds that they used to get into the site. So 800 years later, not only are people gathering in these same places people were gathering long ago, but they're using the exact same routes. The architecture at Cliff Palace, the four-story buildings, the towers, remind us of the legacy that the ancestral Puebloan people left behind and how amazing they were when they were living here as well. So that's Mesa Verde, um, the Cliff Palace. The uh, walk down was treacherous. The walk up <laughs> was treacherous. Uh, with those ladders you had to climb and put your hand in those openings in the rocks that were left there for uh, hundreds and hundreds of years. This is that observation area that um, I shot from the day before. So that's where we were looking down from, looking down to see that. So we managed to get down there. The, um, the ranger that actually worked at the site itself warned us that if we are not in top physical shape, don't even think about trying to get down there. Um, in fact, one guy had actually uh, died of a heart attack several weeks ago, according to this ranger attempting to do this. But um, yeah, we were in pretty good shape and uh, decided to go ahead and, and do it. Um, for my wife, this was a bucket list item and we managed to do it. So we're heading down there. We stopped off uh, near, near the bottom. Uh, we just, just all kind of gathered around in this area. Um, this is before we gathered around, I actually hopped up on those rocks and. We were sitting there listening to one of the rangers explain what we were about to see. And then um, this is taken from where I was sitting. And that's our group. It was a, a, fortunately a relatively small group. So we're getting ready to walk through and here we are doing it. You know, you can find all kinds of videos on YouTube that do a really good job of explaining much more about these various sites. This is something I found interesting, but it's nothing that I really know much about at all. <laughs> so um, I apologize for my lack of information, but if you want the information, it is out there. But this was all pretty amazing. Even with me not knowing much about it, uh, I still had a great time, enjoyed this a, a great deal. These are things you just don't see back home. Once you're down there, you get a better idea for the scale of things. You don't get that sense looking at it from that lookout point up above. But once you're there, you see, oh my God, how on earth did they ever construct these things? Circular things like this, amazing. And they had to get the materials there. That was the thing. How on earth did they do that? There's the lookout tower. So I'm just shooting this video from where I was standing down below. Down, there's a kiva, obviously. My wife wanted her picture taken to show everybody that, hey, she made it. And she did and got out okay okay so our next stop once we got out <laughs> we started driving again with our guide and um, he showed us the house of many windows and it's called that because guess what there are many windows so you can see some of these windows here 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 right in the middle of the slide i don't know if Four windows counts as many. There's probably more windows down there. I just 
might have not known where to look. But again, this is all in this canyon. And uh, our guide was uh, driving, so I just took advantage of that and shot this video. We're driving back through that burned out area. Again, it was pretty amazing in a, in a very sad way how extensive the damage was from these wildfires. Okay, so after all that, we then made our way from Mesa Verde uh, back to the Best Western Suites for our second night there. Found another good restaurant to eat at in Cortez, Colorado. And I guess we both had salads. And that looks like some kind of butternut squash soup of sorts. I don't even remember it anymore, <laughs> to be honest with you. Um, I, normally, I record these right after we get back, but um, my computer equipment was outdated, and it was impossible to do a recording. So I'm actually recording this like a couple months down the line after I finally upgraded my system to a Mac Studio. So on day five, we drove from... Uh, Cortez, the Best Western in Cortez, and our intent was to go all the way to Alamosa, which we ultimately did. But we discovered from road signs along the way that there was this place that I neither of us heard about called Chimney Rock. So it was, you know, we had enough time. There was there were no other sites we were going to see that day. So we both agreed, hey, let's stop and check out Chimney Rock. So we actually did that. We had to get off this main interstate and get on some secondary roads to get there. But it turned out to be uh, well worthwhile. So there's the entrance to Chimney Rock National Monument in San Juan National Forest in Colorado. So again, this is at the entrance. entrance and uh, the two major structures are this one. I guess this is the actual Chimney Rock right up there. So you drive along this highway. And so we're getting closer. And there's a visitor, visitor station up there. And then you can walk up as far as you want. We didn't go all the way. We probably went maybe about um, three quarters of the way to the top because we still had some distance to drive to get to Alamosa. So I, I just shot these from as high up as I got, as we got. Very scenic area. That's a good view of, of the, the two main structures. Chimney Rock and this other structure there. Okay, finally, we went from Chimney Rock all the way to Alamosa. So this was about two and a quarter hours driving. And checked into the Fairfield Inn and Suites at Marriott, by Marriott at Alamosa. And we had stayed here on a previous trip as well. That's a view from our room <laughs> of this huge open field. That's actually a movie theater, a movie complex. I think I saw maybe three cars at, at most that evening parked out there. Okay, woke up the next day and we made our final venture up to visit two very good friends who live in Monument, Colorado, north of Colorado Springs. So we, we visited them and had a great, great visit with them and um, went out to dinner. And then uh, the next day, day seven, we drove from Monument up to the Denver International Airport where we stayed overnight. We stayed overnight in the airport because we had an early morning flight. So this was a view from our hotel room at the airport. And we had dinner somewhere in the airport. <laughs> And here, here's a view at night from our room. And then our last day, day eight, it's now daylight. And there's the parking lot, another view from our room. And it was now time to go back home. So we took a flight from Denver to Minneapolis. From Minneapolis, we had to change planes again in Detroit. And then finally back to Bradley International Airport in Hartford, Connecticut. And then we drove home from there. So that was our big adventure, uh, the first one following the pandemic, this one in 2022. Hopefully there will be many more. Thank you for watching.